Welcome back everybody. This is another episode of Shell and Kevin Go To and today we are in Finland. Uh, so this is again a country we've both been to. I've been there a lot more than Kevin but let's start off with you Kevin and um, we, we, we have Heike the Moomin Troll here to uh, help there. us. Yeah. Um, Hello. How did you find Helsinki which is the only part of Finland you've seen? That's right. I've only, I only got to see Helsinki and some of the media environs. I was there once as a member of the staff for the 75th World Science Fiction Convention. And I, I got a good entry to it, a, a sort of roundabout way to get it, thanks to the vagarities of using uh, frequent flyer miles. I had to fly from the U.S. to Hamburg because uh, I couldn't get in to Helsinki, but I could get back from Helsinki, uh, so that was using Alaska Airline miles via Iceland, and so really copy. But flying to to Hamburg and then spending a night there, and uh, incidentally having the experience of being the sixth guest the hotel had ever had, and they just opened that day, oh. <laughs> and, and, a, and and a card on my, and I've kept the card, a card on my bed that said, "Congratulations, you are the first person to ever stay in this room." <laughs> Really? And then, yeah, spent one day walking around Hamburg, going to the miniature wonderland about which I could talk even more, but we're not in Germany. And then wow. taking the train up to um, Travamunda and taking the the ferry up to Helsinki. Now, when and, and when we say ferry, we're not talking about a short trip across an estuary or something like that. This is two nights. You board, you board at like 11 o'clock at night. Uh, a two nights on the ferry. I got a, a, a stateroom. It was very pleasant. Uh, and, and they fed you pretty well. And fortunately for me, it turned out that almost all of the people who were walk-on passengers, because it's primarily a vehicular ferry, uh, almost everybody who's a walk-on passenger was either somebody I knew or a friend of somebody I knew, because we were all going to WorldCon. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so it's, we spent, you know. It's a small world. That's right. So we just, you know, when we weren't, when we weren't eating, uh, again, they fed you pretty well. Uh, I had, in fact, you could go back to the buffet a second time for in the middle day meal. I just didn't, I didn't have a room for it. It was that much food. Sure. Uh, but a lot of the time when, when you, we weren't eating, we were hanging around in the bar, have, starting our convention early. So, you know, we, a two night ferry trip, nice trip. Uh, and then uh, you helpfully uh, collected me. Yeah, Otto and, and I came terminal. down to the ferry terminal to That's collect you. Saving me from having to negotiate buses uh, and so on, although I probably could have managed it. Uh, and then we went in and we went to spit the convention there. Oh, what a wonderful city that is. And it's so easy to get around to. I mean, it, it kept all its trams. It has its heavy rail uh, it, as well. I didn't try any buses, but and it even has a, heavy, and it has a subway. I rode that once, you know, but uh, you showed me around the city. Uh, when we had one afternoon mm -hmm. available, sure, uh, we, we we just saw uh, we, well, just rode around everywhere, looked at looked at all this neat stuff, all this great, all the great scenery and wonder, interesting architecture. Uh, there are some who who pointed. I, I said, "Wow, look at this train station." Others who pointed, I said, "No, nah, it's just a, it's it's just inspired by Soviet brutalism." And I said, "I don't think it's. I think you're, I think you're not being. Uh, I think you're not being charitable enough. Honestly, it just." Uh, uh, I mean, there's a lot of Helsinki that is actually inspired by Russian architecture, but it's yes. Peter the Great when Russia exactly controlled uh, Finland, and, and a lot of the municipal architecture looks very Russian. It does, and that's not a bad thing. I mean, I thought that a lot of that was good architecture, yeah. and and talking of, of of Russia imperialism, I had an opportunity on I guess the day after the convention, I I took the train up to and I forget the name of the, the city. I, mean, I took the train trip out of out to the north because the trains were wonderful because it is the the center of their train network. There, I just grab took a train up to the city where the national railway, the Finnish National Railway Museum is, and I spent a good chunk of the day there. And they have among their things that I that is something you cannot see in Russia. Uh, they have the only existing Russian imperial train set left because when the revolution came in Russia, all the Russian imperial trains were destroyed. <laughs> uh, but the set that was in Finland 
they got they kept that one and 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 it and that was just part of one of the interesting parts of the railroad uh, history of course one of uh, the interesting things about the railway station in helsinki is that you can look up at the departures board and yes. see trains leaving for st petersburg and moscow that's right and we saw the train uh, the russia i think it may actually be called uh the the oh, the train up uh, from from russia comes in and we saw it i saw it many times and some of our friends uh went to st petersburg and then took the train uh, over to, uh, to, to Helsinki. Uh, I also, at your suggestion, uh, after the convention, when I was on my own there, took the, again, municipal ferry again, the, uh, uh, took the, 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 my transit pass even worked on it. Uh, the little 15 minute ferry, ferry boat ride over to, let me see here, Sumolino Island. Sumolina. Yeah. Sumolina, yes. Yeah. And that was an all day thing to, to explore this, this cult, world cultural site. Um, was originally it was a, it was a, a fortress island in in the harbor to protect the harbor. It was used as a custom station. Uh, it is now, I say, a cultural site. But there are people living on it. There's there's a several hundred people living on it, and including the fact that when you're walking around the island, there are notes saying residential area, please do not disturb residents as you're walking from one to museum to another in the area. Uh, I don't among know the museums, sort of residents they might be. <laughs> Well, I noticed that in particular because it has a bunch of different museums on the island. Of it. I didn't see them all, uh, but one of the the one that was sort of off the, the main path was the the Museum of Smuggling, because it was a customs. It was I think it's in the old customs house actually, and and it has a, a, a history of how all the ways people were evading customs, uh, things like how they could do fiddly bits with cars in order to evade the regulations on, it, on, on importing them, that sort of thing. Uh, it, was, it was funny, actually, in many ways, uh, somewhat tongue-in-cheek. They have uh, a big military museum, history, history, military, and they don't, they don't shy away from the fact that, uh, of Finland's involvement in the Second World War, of who they had to ally with. Uh, they were a small country caught between two bigger countries fighting, and it was not an easy thing to deal with. Uh, they they talked much of the Winter War there were about that, and, and things like and I and, and so I appreciated their the, the honesty in that. They also have the only I think the only remaining Finnish submarine. That's right. Yeah. That's right. They, they, uh, Finland is not allowed to have military submarines as part of the settlement of, of the Second World War, and but they were allowed to keep one as a museum piece, and I, I got to explore that and watch your head because it's yeah. not built. It's not built for people that are 190 centimeters tall. No, it, no, no, <laughs> no. no, no. Sub, submarines are not built for big people. That's right, absolutely. Mm. Uh, just uh, yeah, all day there, uh, and I could have right. spent another whole day there if I'd had a chance. Yeah. Of course, in Helsinki, I dragged you along to my favorite restaurant. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, what's the name of it? I've lost the name. Harold. I remember that. Harald. That's right. I did think, okay, Harald, yes, yeah. which seems, to, which is a Viking restaurant, which it, is, well, it's about as Viking as Outback Steakhouse is Australian. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> yes. the, the, the Harald chain, it, it is a chain. There's one in every major Finnish city. Yeah. And, I think the entire point of it is poking fun at the Swedes. Finland <laughs> has a long checkered history of being conquered by its neighbours. I mean, yes. Finland, uh, so Sweden rather, uh, under you know, Charles and whatever, um, had a big empire in the Nordic area and they ruled Finland for a long time. And then Russia took Finland away from the Swedes. And it, it wasn't until, I mean, it's, it's what, 100 years um, Either this just, year or just, year. just a hundred years, yeah. yeah. Uh, and and in note, I note that the the Swedish influence is still there. About, I guess, ten percent of the population, approximately, is uh, Swedish as their first language. Mm -hmm. And all of the uh, on the trains, the announcements were trilingual. They were in Finnish, yes. Swedish, and English. And Tuva Janssen, of course, wrote in Swedish. Okay. So, yeah. So. You know, Finland's most famous cultural export. Um, but, but, yes, Har so. but Harald was tremendous fun. Absolutely. Uh, it, uh, it was, and, and the food was good too. That's one of the key things. It, it'd be one thing to go to a, a, a cartoony restaurant for the experience once and then say, well, yeah, but the food's not really worth it for what you pay. The food was worth it. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, so much so that later in uh, after the convention, I went there again with uh, some of my friends. Uh, you, uh, we, we didn't have to. Ch ch when you were you'd gone one way, I went another, and and then, so I, I was I and I go back again because I like the food and and it's fun. It's a fun place to eat. Yeah, and as I say, it's 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 poking fun at the Swedes. So the, 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 yeah. the Vikings would have been Swedes, and the the Finns play it up to the hilt of of all of the stereotypical Viking stuff. Uh, including like the once hats with the horns, the hats with the horns. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I remember once they they served rotting shark, but they they wouldn't <laughs> let the women eat it. Apparently, you know, that wasn't the damn thing. But, yeah, <laughs> it's it's a great restaurant. The food is really really good. I uh, did have I, I had the I had the meat on a skewer, which was yeah. quite an experience there. You know, <laughs> well, that, that's that's meat on a sword, not on a on skewer. a sword. Okay, that's yeah. true. It's on a sword. Yeah, big. Uh, yeah. And the cinnamon beer is lovely as well. Ah, okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, when we were there, I, I'm, I've, I've overlooked the, the, the History Museum that we went to, the yes, National indeed. History Museum, yep. which preserves history even as far as the front door, if you recall. Yeah, there are bullet holes in the front door from the, uh, the Winter War. Uh, the revolutions and, uh, and such, you know, all, these, all the fighting that went on there, yeah. And they preserved that. Uh, it made sense to me, and I, I enjoyed enjoyed that a great deal. Learning about the history of the place is very very interesting. Yeah, so. a great great city, and and lovely lovely people, and as we say, fabulous but, public transport. But that's you know basically aside from my one little quick excursion up to the railway museum and back, and getting able to see oh what lovely countryside they have here on the train. Uh, I basically saw Helsinki. You, however, have been to a lot of rest of. Of Finland. So why don't you talk about that? Yeah, so I, I've seen a lot of the rest of Finland because I go to FinCon, their national science fiction convention every year, and it, it moves around various cities. The first one I ever went to actually is, is Juvascula, which is sort of up in the, the Midlands. So there are no big cities in the far north of, of Finland where it's very cold, but Juvascula is, is an industrial city in the Midlands and it has a big university and everything. My, my friend Irma lives there and is in fact a local councillor these days. Um, Euroscular isn't a huge like touristy place, but it is a lovely, beautiful city with, with big lakes in the middle. It reminds me to a certain extent of Madison, Wisconsin, in that it, it's built on these enormous lakes. But of course, being Finland, it has like mountains around and there's ski jumping and all that sort of stuff. But um, lovely, uh, lovely, lovely city. But the, for the tourist, the place to go is Tampere which is a little bit further south and it has a whole bunch of interesting stuff. It's got this amazing cathedral where there's a lot of artwork uh, done by a local artist. Uh, some of it naked children, which is a little strange thing to, to see in a cathedral, but it really is lovely art. I'll try and certainly post some pictures of Tampere Cathedral on the blog. Uh, it has uh, the world's only Lenin Museum because oh. Lenin, when he was planning the Russian Revolution, lived in Tampere. And he, he and his friends would, would meet up in local pubs and, and whatever. There's, there's some, he spent some time in Helsinki as well. There's a, a pub you can go to in Helsinki where the, um, the proto-communist party would, would meet, uh, so Lenin and Trotsky and whatever. But there's an actual Lenin museum in Tampere that, so that you can go and see all the, the memorabilia from his house and whatever. Um, I'm guessing they don't have a Lenin impersonator, though, like they have in St. Petersburg. No. I saw that on something. And he makes yeah. his, his diet. <laughs> and the, uh, the, the other thing to do in Tampere, of course, is Tampere is the home of the Moomin Museum. Ah, uh, yes. And they, they've just redone the whole place. It's absolutely gorgeous. So if you have any fondness at all for the Moomins and their wonderful little friends, then you must go along to Tampere and see the Moomin Museum. Uh, yeah. So that's, yeah, the um, great touristy city, Tampere. Now, the other place that FinCon goes to is out on the west coast, which is the city of Turku, which was the capital of Finland until the Russians took over and oh. moved it to Helsinki. Uh, Turku, of course, is the closest city to Sweden, so mm -hmm. it made sense for the Swedes to put the capital there. Helsinki has a much better harbour and is also closer to Russia. So that's fine. Um, I haven't spent a huge amount of time in Turku, although it does seem to have you know, quite an interesting river where um, most of the, the harbour stuff is along the river. 
and historical stuff. There's a castle there. Uh, but the main reason I tend to end up in Turku every year is to take the ferry to the Orland Islands. Okay. And the Orland Islands are halfway between Finland and Sweden. So there's a ferry that goes from Turku to Stockholm and stops off at Mariham in the islands along the way. Now, Orland is an archipelago, lots and lots of little islands. So the biggest one has the capital town Mariham on it. And uh, amongst other things, Orland is believed to be the original home of the people called the Rus, a group of Vikings who sailed eastwards and settled around the area of Moscow and whatever and founded a nation there. Wow. Um, so they're a very small set of islands, but with a big, big view of the world. And right. that didn't stop with the Vikings. Orland was the home of one of the world's biggest windjammer fleets. And there is a beautiful windjammer called the Pomeran, which is still there and which you can go on board. Uh, and it's a lovely, lovely ship. Neat. These, these days, Orland is mostly known for agriculture. They grow a lot of apples there. Uh, they also have Stalhagen, which is a great Finnish brewery, uh, who, amongst other things, brew the cinnamon beer for Harold's. But, so that's not, <laughs> um, you know, the, they don't sell that publicly. Um, and they're, they're basically lots of great restaurants. It's, um, it's a holiday destination for both Swedes and Finns. Um, beautiful in the summer, obviously, lots of sailing and, and that sort of thing. Um, we go there um, every spring for a little relaxicon, which is a, a sort of joint effort between Finnish and uh, Swedish science fiction fans. Sounds like a lot of fun. I wish I could go. It sounds, it sounds like great, great entertainment. No, it, it's certainly a beautiful place. And there's, there's a whole bunch yeah. of tours you can do. There's a, there's a castle there. that I, Finland is one of the few countries in the world that the British have not invaded. <laughs> but we did try to knock down the castle in the Orland Islands while we were fighting the Swedes. <laughs> so, yeah. Of course. Yeah. There you go. Um, and um, there's, there's also a, a chocolatier on the island. Mercedes, the Venezuelan lady who used to run it, has retired now. So I'm not sure what it's like, but uh, we, we used to go every year and uh, sample her chocolate, which was amazing. It's a lovely little convention as well. It's, it's quite small. There's only ever one guest. And I uh, feel very sorry for Tasha Shuri, who was going to be the guest this year. But uh, we've, we've rolled everything forward to next year and hopefully she will get her visit then. Okay. So that's, that's all the bits of Finland. I think, I mean, I've, I've seen little um, towns as well. Something you should mention actually is, is that Finland still has a offshoot of the Russian Orthodox Church. It's now separate. It's the Finnish Orthodox Church because they are no longer controlled by the Russians. Um, and th this actually folks is, is why there's the whole thing about the Second World War is that the Finns had just fought a war against Russia for their independence and then sandwiched between Russia and Germany, they had to choose a side. And clearly they couldn't choose Russia because that would mean going back to being part of Russia again. And that's why they ended up fighting on the side of the Germans. But yes. uh, they, um, they, they have realized that um, it was a little complicated. Yes, and, and under the circumstances, who do you choose? You have to, basically you did have to choose sides in that case. Yeah. Because if you didn't, you'd just be rolled over by everybody. Sure. And choosing okay. between Stalin and Hitler was not an easy thing to do. No, it wasn't. Um, they, uh, and, yeah. Um, so, yes, um, loads of, of, of good history and stuff. But also the Finnish Orthodox Church, it, it is a, you know, it was for many years Russian Orthodox Church. And therefore, it has all of the same features of a Russian Orthodox Church in terms of the, the icons and the beautiful churches with the domes on the, the onion domes on the top. Uh, and fabulously beautiful places to visit. But the thing I really want to do is to go to far north Finland in the winter to see the Aurora. Um, uh, because, yes. You know, one of these days. Yep. I've never oh, been far enough north myself to see it either. So. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that, that we, we must get to do is, is go to a proper Finnish sauna. Now, the, the Finns, uh, Finland is a very large country. Much yes. of it, of course, is covered in forest, um, which they use to make toilet roll for the rest of the world. <laughs> yes, and, so, also to and also to hold data centers where they can dump yeah. the heat 
<laughs> sure, yeah, they, they, they're big into data centers these days, the further north yeah. the better. Um, but uh, it's a tradition amongst Finns to have a summer cottage by a lake. There are loads and loads of lakes in uh, Finland. Why do Finns really like settling in Minnesota? Whatever, um, because lakes make them feel at home. So Finnish families, if they have any sort of wealth at all, have a summer cottage by a lake. And for the month of July, the whole country goes on holiday and goes to their summer cottage for four weeks to have a, have a relaxing time. There you go. Yeah. And many of these summer cottages, of course, will have old fashioned saunas when you go in. There's a, a wood stove burning. And, mm. and the Finns do go naked into the sauna and they expect everybody else to as well because it's traditional. Uh, yeah, well. Um, it's before, not something I've done, but uh, I, I, I guess I could go through. Go, uh, by the way, there's also, I, I know what you said there in Minnesota, there's actually also a large Finnish influence in uh, Western Oregon along the Columbia River area, uh, West, Western, Northwestern Oregon and Southwestern uh, Washington State, because I, I noticed that the, son, the Sons of Finland have, are a lodge organization in there, and and you see, and there's even and there's buildings that that influenced by them, so they're maintaining their cultural heritage from their settlers that came to the U.S. Uh, before mm -hmm. Finland adopted the euro, they of course had their own currency, and one of the uh, the notes had a picture on the the back of a Finnish family emerging from the sauna and going down to the lake for a dip. So ah. it's, as far as I know, it's the only currency in the world to have naked people on it. <laughs> I mean, even though it wouldn't have been the full experience, I'm, I'm still disappointed that uh, I was, when I was staying at the hotel at the Worldcon, I was there, I actually had an upgrade to the uh, executive floor, which had its own sauna on that floor, except it was broken. So uh -huh. I, didn't get, I didn't get to use it. No. Anytime during, and there are times, especially after five days of convention, where I really could have used it. Yeah. <laughs> we got to get you to FinCon sometime, and then you I'd, can I'd love to go. Um, yes, so particularly at Tampere, I think has the the best saunas. Um, I you know, remember the one when Cat Valente was the the guest of honor. We were out there on uh, by the lake. Um, it was a beautiful, warm, clear night. So. Um, fine until about 11, 12 at night, gorgeous purple sunset, uh, skinny dipping in the lake and the sun. It was a, a marvelous, uh, marvelous evening. Uh, well, yeah, I, perhaps someday when we're allowed to travel again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Finland would be the first place I would want to take you. Right. Okay, well, thanks for inviting me along for our shared trip through the memories of Finland. Anytime.